I've got some good news and I've got some bad news. Why can't you open a standby database for more than two to three days in a calendar year? I've got some good news and I've got some bad news. Caveat, quick caveat here, we're talking about licensing. Do I look like a licensing expert? I hope I don't. I don't work in the licensing team. I don't have a legal background. Obviously, uh, what follows here is my personal opinion and my understanding of the license documentation I've read. And hopefully it's accurate, but please be aware of that. I'm a techo, I'm not a license guy. Now, when someone said more than two to three days for calendar year, a standby database, it's actually wrong. You're probably looking at zero days, to be honest. Two to three days sounds bad, but I think even that is perhaps an exaggeration. Now, the reason I say that, with not time to crap on both the customer here or crap on Oracle, is we need to understand the nuances involved. So let's talk about redundancy, failover, clusters, etc., and where the rules apply and what you can do. And I actually think they're reasonable. I think this caters to, I would imagine, a lot of customer uh, requirements. Back in the day, we'd start off with a machine that looks like this. You have some disks, you have a server, everyone talks that server, everything's fine, of course, until the server crashes and everyone's booted off. And they sit there idle while you go reboot the server, replace the server, fix the hard drives, etc. Back in the day, life was simple. And then the internet came along and of course everyone started saying, well, hold on, we need to be 24 by 7 by 365. You've seen all those, you know, claims that oh, if you're, you go down, then, you know, the customers will go somewhere else, et cetera, et cetera. I've always been a bit dubious on that statement, but in any event, we obviously have a very strong aim for uptime. And so this is what the natural evolution, this is what people used to do before things like data guard and stuff came along. This is what everyone used to do. They say, well, what we'll do is we'll have two machines. They both have access to the storage. We still have just one copy of the database. Everyone talks to one machine. That's the active machine. The other one just sits there and it sits there for that fateful day when the active one blows up. Something causes a catastrophe on that one. And what we do is rather than sit there and wait to replace the machine, we would actually switch these over node using some clustering software. Everyone would then re-log back on and we're off and running. This is what we used to call an active passive clustering. Now, the key thing here is in these situations, if you've got one active server, the other one sits there idle, and you've got only one copy of the database, you have multiple servers that can access it only one at a time. This is the facility where you only have to license just the one box. You don't have to license both. Now, if you've only got one box license, what happens when you do have that crash and you need to fail over to the other one? Well, you're allowed to do that 10 days per year. And that's a total of 10 24 hour periods. It could be two lots of five, could be 10 lots of one, doesn't matter, but you get 10 in total. And so this is where these talks of things like two to three days and five days, et cetera, come along. In this particular case, where you've got a effectively a spare server sitting around that might be hooked into the storage, might even, but it can't actually activate the database unless the other one is not active, then you only have to license the one box. And, and for anyone using active passive clustering, that's obviously a no brainer solution. You get to test your failovers. And I should notice that the 10 days is either planned or unplanned, doesn't matter. But you get to test your failovers, which is obviously good business practice. And you only have to license them one box. So you're getting a good return on your investment. The moment you go beyond that, the moment you have, for example, a second copy of the database, for example, using DataGuard, which is keeping them in sync, or you have DataGuard on one node and active on the other, then you do need to license both servers. So when our original customer said, how come I can only open a standby two to three days per year? I'm assuming they meant without it being licensed, that's incorrect. If you have a standby database, that machine must be licensed. Don't think of any exception to that example. Um, it must be licensed. Even if you're doing host level mirroring, if you're not using DataGuard, but you're using some sort of software to mirror the database to a, another set of storage, which is hooked in to another machine, then even in those cases, I'm pretty sure you have to have both servers licensed because effectively Oracle is protecting their, their facilities here from running particular software, which would then be, for example, running in say read-only mode or doing facilities where it's actually actively running the software, but people say, oh, we don't need to license it. So if you've got 
two copies of the database or using something like DataGuard, then you've got to license everything. And once you have licensed everything, you can do whatever you want with it. There is a, a sort of a special exemption to all of that, which is if you're just running the one box, and it might be running active passive clustering as well, it doesn't matter. You've only got the one box license, it's running, etc. One extra thing you are allowed to do is you're allowed to go get your tapes and restore them to a new box as a test of your database recovery facilities. You don't have to license this one. You're allowed to do this up to two days per year in total for a maximum of four times. And I think that's actually a reasonable requirement there in terms of if you want to test your database recovery, you can do it once every quarter. Um, you can actually fire that box up to make sure it actually starts and that you, can, you, know, you can see the data and you can do it for up to 20, 48 hours in a year and up to four times. Um, that's not four by two, that's two days in total, four times in total as well. You get to do test database recoveries without having to go license a brand new box. Here's my advice. My advice to all of this is the way to avoid all these issues of how many days, et cetera, et cetera, is I would always have data guard, and I've said this before in other office hour sessions, I would always have data guards, and I would simply run it on another licensed node. Now, if you're thinking, oh, that means I have to pay double, I disagree. No one I know has a single Oracle server running in their hardware platform. They always have two. Typically, one's production, one's non-production. And, and even that's generally the bare minimum. There's nothing to stop you running your production data guard on your non-production server. It's already licensed, and the reality is the cost of maintaining a data guard node is incredibly low. The application of Redo is incredibly efficient, and disk is remarkably cheap. The moment you do that, the benefits you get from having a copy of your production database floating around are huge. Backup offloading, reporting offloading, snapshot standby, application deployment testing, patching testing, so many good things you can do when you've got what effectively is a throwaway copy of your production database that is kept in sync for you in real time. Absolutely awesome. And in particular, no matter what you do, the job always is maximize your return on investment. I think people get upset with um, paying extra license fees, not for the cost, but for the fact that they're paying extra money and not seeing a return on that investment. So I always encourage people, whatever you've got licensed, right, you should be looking to get the absolute bang for your buck out of those. All that information on the previous slides, I got from that particular reference there. Assets Data Recovery Licensing 070587. Caveat to all of that is I'm not a licensed person. And also, even if you are dealing with a licensed person, your particular customer relationship, your particular customer circumstances might involve different agreements in your contracts, et cetera. So always speak to your local account manager and if necessary, log a call with support. I can give a real life example. Many years ago, I was working for a mining company here and we actually came to an arrangement because we had bursts of activity, et cetera. We came to an arrangement as to what we would come up with a meaningful metric for concurrent users. We saw, you know, we, these are the days before you used to license by core. We had an agreement in writing with Oracle as to how we would report on, how we would measure, and how we would then pay for the license for that concurrent users. So it was different to probably any other customer on earth. Be aware that there's always exceptions to the rule, always liaise with your local account rep and support because that's what they're there for, that's what you pay your support dollars for.